Good day. Today's column is titled, Lockout, Bad News for Canada Post. On Tuesday morning, a quote appeared in the Montreal Gazette saying, NDP Labour critic Yvonne Godin chastised the government, saying that the ultimate loser will be the postal employees. That's the argument his party is going to make to the government and Canadians in a bid to delay or possibly kill the legislation. The legislation referred to by Godin is the back-to-work legislation brought in by the Conservative government in Ottawa. NDP Labour critic Yvonne Godin obviously doesn't have any friends in small business or in the newspaper business. The ultimate loser in the postal strike that has dogged Canada for over two weeks may well be the postal worker, but not in the way that Godin may envisage. Small businesses are the immediate loser, and quite bluntly, I and my fellow publishers are among those suffering. We depend on Canada Post to deliver our paper and to bring us the checks from our customers. The cash flow for small business has been effectively cut off, and a lot of extra expense has been rung up to deliver the papers to our readers. The banner delivered papers to all kinds of locations last week, and we were glad to do it. The good news is that we didn't have to pay Canada Post. That's where the ultimate loser may well be the postal worker, because everyone who depends on Canada Post is now evaluating how they can get along without Canada Post. Not to make too strong a point of it, but the banner pays enough postage each year to cover the cost of two Canada Post employees. We are the largest customer in the area for Canada Post. And trust me, if we can work out a way to get along without Canada Post, we will certainly do so very soon. Canada Post and the Canadian Union of Postal Workers, CUPW, are equally to blame for the problems at Canada Post. CUPW workers are among the highest paid hourly employees in rural Canada. Their jobs are stressful at times, but who doesn't have a stressful job? Can Cup W honestly tell us that sorting mail or carrying mail is more stressful than being a meat cutter at High Life or a school teacher or a nurse? I don't think so. For small business owners and for many others, the bottom line is if a person doesn't like their job, then change jobs. It's not rocket science. The, the truth is that many people would give a lot to have a Cup W job and the corresponding wages and benefits. Another recent column claimed that at any time, 25% of Cup W workers are on sick leave or on light duties. That sounds pretty fishy. It might be wrong to assume that there's something very wrong with that picture, but it doesn't look good. It's hard not to assume that the system is being abused by the workers. Cup W also claims that some of the mechanical handling of mail is stressful and dangerous. That could be, but the reluctance by Canada Post and Cup W to adopt technology is astounding. Canada Post offices aren't allowed to have a fax machine. Fax technology is just about obsolete now after 20 or more years of use. It would have been unnatural for Canada Post to install coin-operated or credit card-operated fax machines in their offices. Canada Post hasn't adopted public access internet computers either. That's another natural fit. The problem is that Canada Post and Cup W have become the buggy makers of the 21st century. A hundred years ago, the buggy makers that resisted change went out of business. The ones who realized that they weren't only buggy makers, but providers of transportation, changed to building cars. Canada Post thinks they are letter carriers and parcel shippers. They aren't, or they, they certainly shouldn't be only that. They need to understand that a letter isn't just a letter. It's a way of transporting information. Faxes can do that. Internet can do that. Letter volumes continue to drop like a rock and Canada Post is still stuck in the old, old ways. Quite frankly, unless Canada Post and Cup W smarten up, they deserve to lose their industry. Staying on with the same stubborn tactics and assuming that everyone will be dependent on Canada Post will result in a huge shift of business away from Canada Post. 
There are over 600 community newspapers in Canada and you can rest assured that every one of them is looking at how to get out of Canada Post. Also rest assured that the next round of wage negotiations at Canada Post will involve a much smaller volume of business. Small business and newspapers in particular will not be hamstrung by a Crown Corporation or a union. We will go around this obstacle and trust me we will find a way of having fun while we're doing it. Never underestimate the power of a small business or a community newspaper. The secret is that small business is flexible and willing to change. Change is often a foreign word to Crown Corporations and to unions. Thank you very much.